ASTM C127 approved in 1988 and re-approved in 2001. It is, a, it is the standard test method for specific gravity and absorption of coarse aggregates. The reporters are me, Ricardo Ceci Mayrina, and Ms. Bernadette Borja. The scope and purpose of this experiment or standard test me method in ASTM C127 are first, to determine the specific gravity and absorption of coarse aggregates only. So, we are not going to include any lightweight aggregates in this experiment. So, the next one is the specific gravity that may be expressed in three different categories. First is the bulk specific gravity. The next one is the bulk specific gravity in saturated surface dry condition. And the last is apparent specific gravity. So, in bulk specific gravity, SSD, and absorption, uh, lalagay natin siya sa underwater for 24 hours para makuha natin yung specific gravity under that condition. And the last one is to understand the relationship of the said specific gravities, yung three, bulk specific gravity, bulk specific gravity in saturated surface dry, and the apparent specific gravity on coarse aggregates. So, yung tatlong yun, ano mga ba yung relation nila sa isa't isa and yung relation din nito sa absorption. So, the next part is the terminologies. The first is, is a specific gravity. It is the ratio of the density of the material to the density of the water at a stated temperature. And it is dimensionless or unitless. So, yung specific gravity, siya yung nagdedetermine kung gano'n ba cadence yung isang material natin compared sa water. So, if nakuha natin specific gravity ng material ay less than 1, it just mean uh, mas less dense, less dense yung uh, material na yun compared sa water. And ang possibility niya ay magpo-float siya sa water. So, kapag naman greater than 1, yung nakuha nating specific gravity sa dun sa material na yun compared sa water, ibig sabihin lang dun, mas dense siya dun sa water and magising siya sa water. So, by meaning of dense, it is it means that uh, kung gano ka closely compact yung substance nung sa material mo. So, ayun. The next one is the apparent specific gravity. The term apparent specific gravity is used because water cannot penetrate the closed pore spaces inside the rock. And hence, the specific gravity measured by water displacement methods includes the effect of internal pore spaces as well as that of the constituent materials. So sa pagkuha ng specific, specific gravity naman, uh, sinasama natin yung mga pores na impermeable by water. So, sa, kunwari, sa isang aggregate, meron tayong mga pores na permeable and impermeable by water. So, dito sa apparent specific gravity, kinukuha natin yung uh, impermeable pores na yun sa pag-solve nito. So, the next one is the bulk specific gravity. It is defined as the ratio of the weight in air of a unit volume of aggregate, including permeable and impermeable voids in the particles, but not including the voids between particles. So, sa bulk specific gravity naman, uh, kinukuha nyo yung bulk specific gravity kasama yung voids inside and outside, outside of the aggregate, or lahat ng pores dun, permeable or impermeable, by water kasama dun sa pagkuha ng specific gravity. Tapos, the next one is the bulk specific gravity in saturated surface dry condition. It is the ratio of the weight in air of a unit volume of aggregate, including the weight of water within the voids filled to the extent achieved by submerging in water for approximately 24 hours, but not including the voids between particles. So, yung Bulk specific gravity naman in surface, uh, saturated surface dry condition, kinukuha niya naman yung 
uh, specific gravity habang nakalubog yung aggregate natin underwater. So, ayun. Meron pa pala. Uh, na-discuss na siya sa previous topics natin, previous standard methods. Yung absorption, which is the ability of the material to absorb water and the permeability. So, or water permeable. Ang ibig sabihin ng water permeable, um, kaya niyang, yung water kaya niyang mag-pass through dun sa structure ng material natin. So, ayun. So, the next part of this report is the significance of this testing. First, it is essential in adjusting the proportions of aggregates in cement mixtures. We're in in complete, computing the cement mixtures, we are using the absolute volume method. Na alam natin yung absolute vet, volume method, meron siyang equation na weight ng material over a specific gravity ng material times unit weight of water. So, sa, sa part na to, kinukuha natin yung specific gravity ng material, ba? So, makaka-apekto siya sa uh, volume ng aggregate na ilalagay natin dun sa cement mixture. So, yun. The next one, uh, we can use the results from this testing in different conditions like pwede natin gamitin yung nakuha nating specific gravity on saturated surface dry condition sa sa wet conditions ng aggregate and pwede na natin gamitin yung apparent specific gravity ng aggregate sa dry conditions naman. So, the other one is the absorption values are determined by getting the difference in weight of the saturated aggregate to the oven dried sample. So, makukuha rin din natin yung absorption value sa coarse aggregate sa testing na ito. So, with respect to the ASTM C566 or yung uh, previous testing method na diniscuss natin kanina. So, the next part is the equipments and laboratory instruments that we are going to use in this testing. So, yung makikita natin sa gitna ay yung common setup sa paggawa ng testing na to. So, sa ibabaw, nakikita natin nakapatong yung balance. Yung balance na yun, dapat sensitive, readable, and accurate to 0.05% ng sample weight. So, syempre, sa, yung, sa, yung sa left naman, upper left, ay yung sample aggregate natin, which is the coarse aggregate. Hindi tayo gagamit ng uh, lightweight aggregates na dito sa experiment na to. So, sa lower left naman ay yung sample container. Yung sample container natin ay ano siya, uh, wire basket. Kumbaga, hindi siya watertight na basket. Uh, may butas-butas siya. May opening siya na 3.35 millimeters or the number 6 wire basket sa, sa sample container. Pwede rin tayong gumamit ng mas maliit pang Mas maliit na mga openings pa dun sa basket na yun. So, dapat meron siyang capacity na 4 to 7 liters. So, ayun. The next naman yung water tank, which is yung nasa ilalim nung setup natin. Sa water tank na to, uh, dito natin uh, binababad yung sample container na merong aggregate and water. So, ayan, nakalubog. Yung, yung water tank natin, syempre, dapat watertight siya. Wala siyang butas na pwedeng paglabas na ng tubig. So, ayun. Yung sa upper right naman ay yung sieves natin. So, yung sieves natin, gagamit tayo dito ng 4.75 mm or number 4 sieve. So, di na tayo gagamit ng sieve na mas mababa. Ah... Uh, uh, mas mababa or mas malaki pa dito dahil ito yung nakalagay din sa scope and sa sampling din natin mamaya. So, ayan. 
The next one is the sampling. Sample the aggregate in accordance with practice D75 or standard practice for sampling aggregates. So yung uh, first ASTM na nireport sa atin last time ay yung sample practice D75 kung saan saan nga ba tayo kuha ng sample natin? Pwedeng from the conveyor belt or dun sa random sampling or sa stockpile or from transportation unit. So, ayun. Pipili lang tayo dun. Tapos, next naman, thoroughly mix the sample of aggregate and reduce it to the approximate quantity needed using the applicable procedures in methods C702. Yung C702 naman, siya yung ah, uh, nandun na kapalob yung kung paano natin ire-reduce yung sample natin. It's either by quartering or sample splitter. Sa experiment na to, gumamot tayo ng sample splitter or rifle splitter kung para makuha yung required sample size natin. So, sabi nga, reject all material passing 4.75 mm or number 4 sieve by drying and thoroughly washing to remove dust or other coatings from the surface. So, lahat ng magpa-pass through sa ating 4.75 or number 4 sieve ay i-disregard natin. Kung ano yung na-retain doon sa number 4 sieve na yun, yun yung gagamitin natin as sample size. And lilinisin pa natin siya after natin makuha yung sample method. So in this part naman, meron tayong table na given. So, sinasabi dito sa table na to na Merong corresponding minimum weight na gagamitin tayo sa test sample natin according to its nominal maximum size. So, itong nominal maximum size natin ay yung size ng uh, aggregate natin. So, in millimeter or in inches, and in inches din siya. So, kunwari, for example, meron tayo ditong uh, 75 millimeter nominal size. So, ang corresponding na minimum weight niya sa nagagamitin sa ating sample ay 18 kg or 40 pounds. So, ganun natin siya gagamitin. So, if the sample is tested in two or more size fractions, determine, determine the grading of the sample in accordance with test method C136. So, kapag daw meron tayong two or more size fractions, uh, magre-refer tayo sa ating test method C136 which is the sieve analysis but in this experiment nga sinabi na sa scope kanina and sa previous slide kagamit lang tayo ng number 4 sieve and lahat ng magpa-pass through dun sa sieve na yun ay i-disregard natin so ayan we will now review the steps of ASHTO T85 and ASTM C127. Once again, these steps come directly from the ACI Technician's Handbook. Once we've obtained our sample, we want to reduce it to the appropriate testing size based on the maximum size aggregate. We now want to dry sieve our sample, rejecting any material that passes the number 4 sieve and keeping any material which is retained on this sieve. We now want to wash our sample to remove any dust particles that may be coating our aggregate. After thoroughly washing, we want to dry our sample to a constant mass. After drying, we want to soak our sample in room temperature water for 15 to 19 hours. Remember, for ASTM, this is 20 plus or minus 4 hours. We now want to roll our sample in a large absorbent cloth. Be sure to take care to avoid evaporation. When complete, our aggregate should be in the saturated surface dry or what's commonly referred to as SSD condition. We now want to record the mass of our sample in the SSD condition. For ASHTO, we'll record to the nearest 1 gram or 0.1% of the sample size. While for ASTM, 
we will record to the nearest 0.5 grams or 0.05% of the sample. We now want to put our sample in the wire basket and immediately submerge the sample and the wire basket. Gently shake the container to remove all entrapped air. After the scale has stabilized, record the mass of the sample while immersed in water. We now want to place our sample in an oven and allow the sample to dry to a constant mass. Be sure that the oven has a temperature range of 110 degrees plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius. Once we remove our sample from the oven, we want to allow it to cool for 1 to 3 hours or until it's comfortable to handle. We now want to record the oven dry weight. Para makalculate natin yung specific gravity and the absorption rate ng isang sample, ito yung mga formulas na kailangan nating alamin at maintindihan. Una is the bulk specific gravity, which is denoted as G sub SB. It is equal to A over quantity B minus C, wherein A is equals to weight of oven dry test sample in air, B is equals to weight of saturated surface dry test sample in air and C is equal to weight of saturated test sample in water. The unit of these values are in grams. The second formula that we need to know is the bulk specific gravity in saturated surface dry condition or also known as SSD. It is equal to B over quantity B minus C, wherein the value of B and C is also stated sa unang formula natin. The third one is the apparent specific gravity. Apparent specific gravity is denoted as G sub SA, and it is equals to A over quantity A minus C, wherein yung value ng A and C ay same lang din kung ano yung value nang nasa first formula and second formula natin. So, yung fourth formula is the average specific gravity values, which is denoted as G. It is equals to 1 all over P sub 1 over 100 times G sub 1 plus P sub 2 over 100 times G sub 2 plus P sub N over 100 times G sub N. Where in G sub 1, G sub 2 to G sub n are the appropriate values for each size fraction depending on the type of specific gravity being averaged. While P sub 1, P sub 2 to P sub n are the weight percentages of each size fraction. Um, ginagamit lang natin yung formula na to kapag yung sample na tinatest natin were tested in separate size fractions. The average value for bulk specific gravity, SSD, or apparent specific gravity, can be computed as the weighted average of the values. So, yung next na formula naman is the absorption, or the percentage of absorption, or absorption rate. Um, it is equals to B minus A over A times 100. And the last formula is the average absorption value, which is denoted as A. And A is equals to P sub 1 times A sub 1 over 100 plus the quantity of P sub 2 times A sub 2 over 100 plus quantity of P sub N times A sub N over 100, wherein a sub 1, A sub 2 to A sub N are the absorption percentage for each size fraction and P sub 1, P sub 2 to P sub N are the weight percentages of each fraction present in the original sample. So, kagaya ng average specific gravity values, yung average absorption values, ginagamit lang din siya kapag yung sample na tinest natin or yung ginamit natin were tested in separate size fractions. So, para mas maintindihan natin yung mga formulas na nabanggit natin kanina, here is our sample problem. So, AVP Industries Incorporated assesses the quality of the aggregates for their mixed design. The following are the given values of the weight. 
determine the absorption rate and specific gravity of the sample and its effect to the mixed design that they will use based on the appropriate formula. So after na masunod nila yung procedure na na discuss natin kanina, here are the weights that was um, obtained. So weight of sample in SSD condition is equals to 2,100 grams. Weight of empty bucket in water is equals to 1,568 grams. Weight of bucket and sample in water is equals to 2,860 grams. Weight of empty pan is equals to 365.4 grams. And weight of pan plus oven dried sample is equals to 2,410 grams. So step one, um, hindi mo na natin gagamitin agad-agad yung formula ng bulk specific gravity. Um, kailangan muna natin compute yung values ng A, B, and C para ma-substitute natin siya sa bulk specific gravity na formula. So, in order for us to compute the value of A, um, we will subtract the weight of empty pan from the weight of empty pan plus oven dried sample. So, here it goes. A is equals to 2,410 grams minus 365.4 grams, which is equals to 2,044.6 grams. So, yung value naman ng B, which is the weight of saturated surface dry test sample in air, ay um, kasama na siya sa given kanina kung naaalala ninyo, which is equals to 2,100 grams. Step 2, to calculate the value of C, which is the weight of saturated test sample in water, we will subtract weight of empty bucket in water from weight of bucket and sample in water. So, C is equals to 2,860 grams minus 1,568 grams. So, we will get the result of C is equals to 1,292 grams. So, the step 3 naman, for us to calculate the bulk specific gravity, is a substitute natin yung values ng A, and A, B, and C na nakuha natin kanina. So, um, bulk specific gravity is equals to 2,044.6 grams over quantity 2,100 grams minus 1,292 grams. So, the value of bulk specific gravity or the G sub SB is equals to 2.530. So, step 4. Um, we will calculate the bulk specific gravity in saturated surface dry condition or SSD by substituting the values of B and C dun sa given natin na formula. So, SSD is equals to 2,100 grams all over the quantity of 2,100 grams minus 1,292 grams. So, ang makukuha nating value for SSD is equals to 2.599. Step 5. Um, to calculate the apparent specific gravity, substitute natin yung values ng A and C doon sa given natin na formula. So, apparent specific gravity or G sub SA is equals to 2,044.6 grams all over the quantity of 2,044.6 grams minus 1,292 grams. So, makukuha natin value for G sub SA is equals to 2.717. Step 6. To calculate the absorption rate, we will substitute the values of A and B on the given formula. So, absorption is equals to 2,100 grams minus 2,044.6 grams over 2,044.6 grams times 100. So, absorption value is equals to 2.71%. So, kung mapapansin niya sa problem na to, um, hindi natin ginamit yung formula ng average specific gravity values at saka ng average absorption values. Kasi sa sample natin na ginamit dito sa problem na to, um, nag-undergo lang siya ng isang trial or ng isang test. So, para magamit natin yung average 
um, specific gravity values the formula and as well as the average absorption value formula kailangan um, nagkaroon ng more than one trial doon sa sample or na test siya in separate size fraction malalaman natin yung relationship between bulk specific gravity SSD and apparent specific gravity sa isa't isa based doon sa mga computed values na nagawa natin kanina. So, bulk specific gravity or G sub SB based doon sa solution natin is equivalent to 2.53 in which it will always be the lowest value. So, it is the lowest value since the volume calculated includes voids permeable to water. Next one is the bulk specific gravity in saturated surface dry condition or SSD which has a computed value of 2.60 in which it will always be the intermediate value. So next one is the apparent specific gravity or G sub SA has a computed value of 2.72 wherein it will always be the highest since the volume calculated includes only the solid aggregate particles and does not include those voids permeable to water. So, palagi lang natin tatandaan na yung may pinakamataas na value palagi is the apparent specific gravity or the G sub SA. Yung nasa gitnang value or the intermediate value is the SSD and yung may lowest value is the bulk specific gravity or the G sub SB. So, for the absorption rate naman, it has a value of 2.7%, which is less than 5%, in which it indicates that the sample aggregates are less absorptive, and less absorptive aggregates are more preferable than highly absorptive aggregates for construction.